Um, my name is Charlie Garcia. I'm uh, uh, been a, been in education for approximately 15 years. Um, I was born and raised in El Paso, Texas. I'm a product of the El Paso Independent School District, uh, in which I graduated from Burgess High School. Um, then on, I went to a wonderful school in Austin, Texas, St. Edwards University, and uh, where I uh, was able to find a true passion for educating children and uh, inspiring adults. Um, I had a, uh, a real learning opportunity at, uh, during my student teaching in Austin at a school called Westlake High School. And I was able, fortunate enough to be with a, with a mentor who was able to not only uh, guide me in the right direction, but definitely show me that, uh, you know, uh, the four corners of the classroom, the heart and soul of it is the planning perspective. Um, at, I, I not only learned from my mentor, I also uh, was able to run into uh, a lifelong soulmate, uh, Jennifer Garcia, uh, my lovely wife who I met there at uh, Westlake High School. Um, soon after we uh, moved to El Paso, Texas, where I was able to start my teaching career at Socorro High School in the Socorro Independent School District. I taught there for seven years, and I, I did uh, English, English one, and English two. Um, from then on, I was able, fortunate enough, to be able to um, uh, be hired as a counselor, as a school counselor. I spent uh, uh, a year at Parkland High School, and soon after that, I opened up East Lake High School. Um, I spent uh, uh, my time at the East Lake and Parkland. Um, really learning the, the perspective that the social and emotional perspective and I think that uh, that has made a real difference in my leadership style to be able to touch the heart and the, and, and in a sense the soul of the individual uh, individual that you're leading and when I mean leading I mean all adults in the area including the children um, I was fortunate enough to be hired as an assistant principal shortly after and I went back to Socorro High School where I spent my time as an assistant principal under the direction of Dr. Miguel Serrano, who was another mentor of mine who I worked with for various years to include my teaching stint and my uh, assistant principal stint. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be, to be offered a position at uh, Camino Real Middle School and the Sleta Independent School District as the principal. And um, it was my first principalship and I am uh, blessed to be able to to be in the Seda District now, presently at the, the principal at Baylor High School. Um, I have uh, traveled many uh, through di di different many uh, edu educational institutions, and and uh, what I've found is uh, there's uh, there's always a, a a a need for good quality leadership, and um, I am passionate about that, and I'm passionate about. Uh, about uh, making sure all students get uh, the optimal learning opportunities daily. Well, tell us about GRIT. How are you applying that? GRIT, uh, we started GRIT initiative uh, personally um, uh, three years ago at Camino Real Middle School. And we started off with a little little middle school down the valley. And uh, we, we the, through a commitment of myself and my leadership team, uh, we, we really felt that uh, there was true value in not just educating our children academically, but also educating our children and the adults in the area on uh, the, the persistence and the consistency um, of uh, developing goals, setting your heart to those goals, and then following through with those goals. Uh, being committed for a long period of time is, 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 is a difficult task, um, but uh, we feel that uh, through, by providing quality opportunities, learning opportunities, and by providing um, opportunities to reach uh, challenging goals and commit yourself. Um, grit can very easily be, be um, something that is contagious. Um, so what we did at Camino Real is we, from the beginning of the school year, we, we first introduced the word, then through character building uh, opportunities, we encourage our students to be um, exposed to different levels of grit because grit can be can be looked at as uh, uh, an area of the, the academics or a, a personal social 
aspect. You know, there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but we, we wanted to, to involve the holistic child. And so we, we made a real deep commitment to make sure that we educated the whole child and the families. So grit started as a, as a small, as a vocabulary word that we introduced and it blossomed into something very special. Um, I can tell you that uh, by the end of my first year at Camino Real, we, we, we hit all seven di academic distinctions. Uh, the second year we went up in every subpopulation to include the ELL and the SPED population. Um, and why am I sharing that data is because we really feel, believe that yes, the four corners of the classroom and the teaching is critical, but we also believe that uh, looking back that those students and those teachers really bought into the GRIT philosophy and it's, it's something that, that they carry with them till this day. So how did you particularly uh, institute mm -hmm. um, how did you actually get the teachers and the students to buy into it? Um, we did that in several different layers. Um, first of all, we, we challenge our students uh, through uh, individualized, custom-made uh, plans of action. We met with students and, and we, we looked at the RTI model, as you all know, and most people in education that are watching this uh, know the RTI model, but we, we looked at it in, in those di different uh, layers. And what we did with some of the students that were at risk, we definitely sat down with the families and we discussed the plan of action and the fact of the matter that we have goals and we, 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 checked, we, we checked up on those students. We made sure that we provided a resource um, that would be consistent and that would be productive. And we, we started a, an after school program called the No Excuse Zone. And in that, in that program what we did is we, we took the students that were struggling the most and uh, we ensured that they were there Monday through Thursday uh, we provided um, materials that they needed. We took a snapshot of their current academic progress uh, on a weekly basis. And then we provided quality mentorship, tutors, um, resources that they would need to include Khan Academy and iStation and Fast Math and Through Math. And we tailored the instruction or the after school instruction to make sure that they were given a second opportunity. And what really happened there, the mindset of the students was one of, they're not giving up on me. We would, uh, the, the trick is here is, is making sure that, that, that we hold students accountable. And at times we, we need to uh, lead them from the front. And so the, the beauty of the No Excuse Zone is that we would, we, we would pick up the students from their classroom, walk them down with a very positive mindset. And so every day those kids would be picked up and they'd be walked down there and they knew that an adult cared about them. There was gonna be an adult, the presence there that was gonna take care of them. What happened is those students soon ended up um, passing their classes. Those students soon ended up wanting to be at the no excuse zone when at times they did not have to. Beautiful thing because you have, you, you also have the students once they are being academically successful, there's always room to grow. You can't raise the floor without raising the ceiling. And, and so you have the, those other students that are the, the higher performance students that we also encourage to come in. And we started those students off as peer mentors, peer tutors, and, and eventually it, the No Excuse Zone became a beautiful area where students were able to, to work on, uh, on their homework, work on increasing their, their knowledge of the content, um, building relationships with adults, with each other. And uh, there's no way you can really uh, you can't buy or sell grit, they either have to have it, but it is contagious. And if you provide those types of, of, of uh, opportunities for students, um, the grit is almost guaranteed because you know you're never gonna, you, somebody's not gonna give up on you. So in a sense, it started with the adults and then with a commitment to that program. And then it, 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 it fed into our students and, and uh, we're very proud of that. We, we, I'm proud to say that at Beller High School, we have started the No Excuse Zone and we had nothing but success. We have teachers coming in there, uh, giving their time and, 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 and energy after school to work with those students. Um, we are currently working with our seniors in, on a similar program called the Finish Strong Program and it's working with our, with our uh, 12th grade students that are at risk um, of, of not graduating on time. Uh, we're being very proactive with those students and we're building that grit with them. We're picking them up. And at times, it, you know, you have a, a, a varying, varying degree of, of attitudes when you deal with students. But for the majority of our students, if you tell them you care, you, you, you're there for them, for the most part, they're going to get it done. Leadership, um, I think sometimes uh, 
uh, gets lost in translation. I think the, 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 the biggest impact a leader can make is bring out the very best in the people that he works for. And that includes not only our students, but that includes the leadership team that he, that he or she puts together. But that also includes the daily interactions with the, with the staff that uh, also facilitates a good learning environment. Bringing out the very best in people is not easy to do. And I think that uh, the best leaders out there understand that uh, people need daily reinforcement, daily uh, 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 inspiration, and they need a, a leader who is able to not only uh, have some direction, but also is able to uh, use a cognitive approach to, to build people into the very best they can be. The number one attribute of a leader in my opinion, is his or her ability to bring out the best in people. Um, I can be as passionate or as energetic as, as, as anybody in this world, but if my team and the people that work with me are not as passionate and uh, uh, excited, then um, it's all in haste. So it's a, it's a team effort and I, I, I give kudos to my team because they, they get me going and I always tell people, hire people that are, that are brighter, uh, more energetic, that have that are going to give you a, a, a different approach and how to look, look at things, and I think that the team here at Bel Air High School is, is exactly that, and I am very grateful for that. And I encourage leaders to do the same thing: um, hire those people that are going to really make you better.